Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be quick and pointed um, in this next uh, quick segment because I, I really want people to understand where we're going. Let's do. Let's go flow the slides as we go here. We all know what the emergency alert system is, so I'm not going to bore you with that. Um, we still support the emergency alert system, right? Um, it's still a viable method of reaching the public, and we'll talk more about that in the next few months as we work closer with you on some of these items. The National Public Warning System, also known as the Primary Entry Point, or PEP, um, is something we're going to talk about. Uh, we'll do the next slide. Uh, we have been working on introducing PEP stations to communities around you um, so that you may be able to leverage those capabilities should the need arise where other things, uh, other communications methods are not operable at the time. So EAS, National Public Warning System, was was born mainly so that the president of the United States can address the American public and under all conditions, right? Um, so what that means is when all other forms of comms, as I mentioned, are down, this radio-based technology, which is very basic, can cover many, many people with one signal, right? It's not dependent on a whole lot of relays and things like that. Um, for example, WABC, uh, uh, which serves the metropolitan area of New York City can also go out all the way up to Boston, right? Pennsylvania, I can hear it here in the DC area. Um, and it covers more than 19 million people. One signal, one transmitter, straight to 19 million plus people. That's extremely powerful. So you in your area, don't forget that radio is powerful, especially on major emergencies. Let's hit the other slide, please. We run through this. So obviously, if you're deaf, you're not going to hear the radio. Uh, you would have to have that translated. But when we say accessibility, it means that coverage is, is the amount of people we can reach. Radio can speak any conceivable language because it's all up to the speaker to, to speak in those languages. And we encourage radio stations around the country working with their uh, leadership, uh, emergency managers and mayors and governors to use radio in major emergencies. During the hurricanes Helene and Milton disasters uh, in the southeast, radio became once again a major source of information and in some cases the only source of information to the public. Next slide, please. So what do we do? We have our own set of capabilities for radio that FEMA runs, FEMA operates, um, and FEMA maintains. Uh, and that's called the National Public Warning System, made up of 77 PEP entities, 74 radio stations, and uh, three relay facilities such as Sirius XM, Premier Radio Networks, and National Public Radio. And we add uh, a number of uh, uh, resilient capabilities, such as power generators, uh, we add, um, obviously, sufficient fuel for up to 60 days of continuous operation and shelters uh, that would house equipment and people so that uh, that jurisdiction, those radio stations working with a jurisdiction, can continue to address the public in their dire need, not only providing EAS, but also providing that long-form uh, audio emergency information material to the public, and very importantly, reassurance. It's one of the things that we forget as emergency managers is to tell people that everything's going to be okay. Help is coming. Um, and post information. Where's the food? Where's the water? Where's the insulin? Where are the diapers? Where do I get soap, cleaning supplies? All the things that we take for granted when everything else is open and we have a blue sky, right? Radio and television are extremely important to what we do and will continue to be so for a while, for a long time to come. So NPWS is uh, kind of our, the IPAW's resilient method for reaching the public. And that's why we're also making some of these capabilities available to the SLTTs, the state, local, territorial, and tribal partners. If you have a PEP station near you, 
we want uh, you to call us. Uh, if you have a question, let us know. Uh, we'll answer if we have one near you, and we'll try to make that connection for you so that in emergency, you can leverage those capabilities as well. Let's go to the next slide, please. All right, so what are we doing out there? Uh, as we modernize our PEP and PWS facilities, uh, we also do big engagements with the radio station, our uh, local and state jurisdictional partners, with our um, first responders and the public. Um, we train folks, we have a training team, Anna Maria Penagos uh, and her team, um, who um, Miranda Lowe uh, is part of that, who go out and literally train folks on the use of these facilities. And we, we had folks come in from the uh, different counties. For example, in New Orleans, we had, I believe, eight parishes or counties coming to come into the launch and come into the training. The radio station allowed these folks to train on how to broadcast to the public in times of emergencies. And what it does is it gives, provides us a, a, a workshop platform for these folks in those communities to come uh, come together. Um, in some cases, we've had the cell carriers come in, although they're not a radio station. They understand that they also have a role. And we've done this through multiple in multiple cities around the country. Honolulu was the last uh, one we did over the, uh, we did it last year and we did it another uh, exercise uh, in the summer where uh, station KHKA broadcasted a special um, program for about two to three hours where they spoke to the public about being ready, being resilient uh, for emergencies. So one um, very powerful thing um, that we want to let you know is that please communicate through whatever means necessary. Don't be constrained. Don't limit yourselves um, to say, we're only going to do this over the wireless emergency alert, or we're only going to do this over the emergency alert system. Talk to your radio stations, talk to your TV stations, even if they're not NPWS PEPs. They want to work with you. Don't see them merely as the media or press. Uh, work with your state emergency communications committees. Work with the Association of Broadcasters in your state and your local groups so that you guys can come together and make things happen. So um, for, in the interest of time, uh, Justin, I'm going to stop there. I think I've, uh, I've made some emphatic um, uh, statements here, and I'll be standing by for uh, questions or anything that's needed. <laughs> Uh, we did get a question. So since we're about uh, two minutes ahead, Manny, has there been any long-term planning in regards to converting PEP from primary AM stations to FM stations? We have 11, we have 11 FM stations in the program. Hmm. We, we're, we don't have plans to just wholesale convert them mm -hmm. um, because AM gives us a, a considerably more coverage. So we're going to stick with that as long as there are people listening to AM radio. Uh, about 75, 80 million people listen to AM radio on a daily basis. So we're not going to give up on that because we get a tremendous amount of coverage around the country with just 74%, 74 radio stations, 90% of the population, only 74 stations. If we went FM, we would need hundreds and hundreds of radio stations to cover the same area. So as long as we have this balance of listenership, uh, the tools to listen, like radios, that's why we support the AM and Every Vehicle Act, um, because we believe it's a public safety issue. Um, and then as things change in the future, we are looking at other methods. But we also have to be resilient. The law requires that we keep these things available. Um, and we don't, at this time, have a better way to do it. As technology develops and as people's uh, concerns, interests, and desires um, uh, change, uh, then we will be changing with that, uh, reasonably. That's uh, interesting that it would take hundreds more FM stations to cover the same for an AM station. That's, that's yes. So, yes. Um, did a good question about, um, is there a place to find out where the PEP stations are in our area? That is something that we've 
kind of recently it, until maybe last year had not posted, but now it is posted on the iPaul's website. Uh, I'll look for that link and drop it in the chat. Um, and, and, uh, and for POCs, we ask that you call the TSSF and we'll deal with that discreetly. So we're not putting out people's names uh, and, and too much information out. The, 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 the NPWS is, is, you know, steps one foot on, on as a national security um, project, right? So there, we don't publish too much information on that. But if you call us, we can give you information about that station and connect you with them. Um, I see a question here that South Dakota cannot receive a viable station. That's why we make the signal available on Sirius XM. Sirius XM is also a PEP and NPR. Um, however, I'm going to just throw this out. Um, if you want to speak to your congressional representative and you want to push for a PEP station in your area, that's probably the best way to do it. Don't tell them I said that. Well, since you guys are since you guys are back, um, what's the latest with the AM radio in vehicles? AM and Every Vehicle Act. Um, can we speak to that a little bit? Well, you know, look, that's up to Congress. Um, it, it passed committee. It, for some reason, uh, hasn't gone for a full vote. Um, if um, if the folks believe in it, believe in its power, uh, then, you know, it's always good to, you know, let folks know, let your member of Congress know. Um, I don't want to advocate for a specific law, except that we support AM radio remaining in vehicles. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, also, this is a personal opinion. It's a slippery slope. What is next? FM, right? Um, one, one, one statement that I've always made regarding this topic is don't, let's not allow public safety information to sit be, behind a paywall, right? If, if all you're getting on a device, whether it's in the car or at home, has to be a paid subscription, then we're asking to be paying for emergency information. The American public shouldn't have to pay to get an evacuation warning or a tornado warning. Just saying, right? Um, slippery slope. Technology isn't there where we have to cancel AM yet. I'm not saying it won't happen. We're just not there yet. Let's keep it. Let's see where it goes. Let's keep using it because it reaches millions and millions of Americans, right? Don't give up on it, right? Uh, there are good new technologies, but their adoption uh, and their availability is not 100% uh, accepted by the American public yet. Just like AM radio isn't 100% accepted by the American public, right? So there's a balance. Let's use them all. We have them available. Let's protect them. You know, you're getting a lot of amens and, and hip hips in the chat after that, that comment there. Manny, I think we can all agree with that. Alrighty, getting back to PEP stations. Um, how do we get a presentation on PEP stations? Uh, specifically, there's uh, someone was looking for their SECC team, a presentation about PEP stations. Um, uh, you reach out to the iPods mailbox, and we'll uh, we'll schedule something with you. All right, I'll drop that iPods mailbox in the chat. Let me. I think are we? That was me, Justin. <laughs> Who's that? David Meyer. Oh, David. <laughs> David wants a presentation <laughs> about PEP. <laughs> I've got a lot of old school guys on EAS, but the PEP station stuff has kind of been a forgotten world. Um, and if we could get some updated information on it, it would be greatly appreciated. Would love to. All right. I'm, wanna, I'm trying to go back to make sure I didn't miss any. Uh, definitely been having some questions about all these links and resources be emailed yes of course uh, we'll distill it uh, we keep adding more links and resources to it um to the chat so uh you know stand, stand by for that but we will definitely make sure we get that out to you 